Hi guys, today we will be discussing about area under the curves. The present figure represents stress strain curve and the area under the stress strain curve represents the energy expended in deforming the material per unit volume. In the sense, it defines the toughness of the material. So let me know what you mean by the toughness. Toughness is the ability of a material to absorb energy and plastically deform without fracturing. In the sense, it has a tendency to resist the fracturing of the material. If we observe the units of the area, it could be a Newton by mm square. So the megapascal, it is in term of Newton by mm square and the strain is in mm per mm. So after the cancellation, so we don't have any more units for the strain. So if you observe the units here, so it generally, it should be a Newton per mm square. But if you are not going to make up for any cancellation, the units can be defined as Newton mm per mm cube. Which says this, the Newton mm will be tended for the work done and the mm cube will stage over the volume. That's why we stated it's the energy expended in deforming the material per unit volume. Similarly, let me start knowing about the area under the load and the displacement curve. So the area under this curve, it represents it's an energy absorption capacity, which means that it is a, a strain energy. Let me start knowing the strain energy with a small example. When the load was applied over the bow, the internal molecules of the bow, it start changing over its location. Because of the rearrangement of the molecules, the internal molecular forces, it makes to store the energy over the bow. That's the reason the stored energy is nothing but strain energy. So when we release the string, the arrow mark, it tends to move over the object. So finally, the strain energy is converted in terms of a kinetic energy. In the same way, we will be knowing the area under the shear force diagram. So whenever the load acts on the object, so either the object gets to be break or it has to be bent. In the present figure, we can observe that paper was turned out because of the two equal and opposite forces which has been acted by the scissor. So whenever the two equal and opposite forces are acted on the object, so definitely there will be a, a shearing. So that's the reason, so if we observe the present figure, so the equal and opposite forces, it makes the object to shear out from one to the next. If we plot these forces over a diagram, then we termed it as a shear force diagram. This is a, a shear force diagram for the uniformly distributed load which is acted over simply supported beam. When we draw the slope of a shear force diagram, we can determine the intensity of the load which is acted over the beam. As well as the area of the shear force diagram, it represents the bending moment of an object. In the same way, when we plot a bending moment of the beam, so the slope of the bending moment, it clearly defines the magnitude of the shear diagram. Thank you.